What's cracking everyone, Kenzo here, and today we're gonna to be cooking up some lamb barbacoa tacos. Don't be scared by the amount of ingredients here. This recipe is fairly simple, and to be honest, mostly hands off once it goes into the oven. We'll start first by salting our lamb, letting the lamb sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes. Then we're gonna put it into a piping hot pan to kick off that Maillard reaction and getting a bit of a sear on. I like to use the Dutch oven for my searing as well as for going into the oven. This lets me build out a bit of fond at the bottom, which really is flavor town to go into your marinade once you actually start cooking. Then we'll be building a bit of a marinade or basically a braising liquid using most of the items you can see here. We'll also be doing a quick pickled red onion, which really helps bring things together and really cuts through the richness of the lamb. The protein we'll be using today is a bone and lamb shoulder. For the marinade, we'll start off with two cups of chicken broth, one old chipotle pepper from a can with a couple tablespoons of its juices, juice of one orange for the marinade, the other orange we'll slice up and put it into the Dutch oven with the lamb, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, four cloves garlic, one large white onion, two teaspoons of salt, one tablespoon honey. Today I'm using a spicy honey. Two tablespoons coriander. One teaspoon cinnamon. Two tablespoons cumin. Two tablespoons oregano. One tablespoon cayenne powder. And we're going to use four ancho chilies, de-seeded and with their stems removed. I live in Australia and this used to be really hard to find, but now you can get them next day delivery on Amazon. Season with salt and pepper liberally on both sides. Give it a bit of a massage, really get it in there. Let it sit for at least 15 minutes. It helps draw out some of that moisture and gets it ready to go into the pan. Start to preheat your Dutch oven. Set the temperature to a medium high heat. Add a bit of olive oil, enough to cover and ensure it doesn't stick. Once heated and hot, chuck in your lamb shoulder. This cut could be a bit awkward to fit in and ideally really you would want something a bit bigger as mine just barely fits in. But as you can see here, I'm kind of pressing it down. It's all about maneuvering it to try to get as much surface contact as you can. But if your roast is similar to mine with a bit of a curve, you might find that difficult. I decided to use a blowtorch to try and get those bits that weren't quite making contact. I don't actually know if this is achieving the desired result. Hopefully someone could tell me in the comments whether I'm stuffing things up here. Do your best to angle it to try to make as much contact as possible. But remember, we're not actually cooking this through. It's all about searing it to lock in those juices. The color on the lamb is looking pretty good to me, so I'm going to pull it out now. Now let's start prepping our marinade. First up, let's get our six garlic cloves, give them a bit of a smash and take off their skin. We don't really have to chop these up as it's all going into a blender. Juice one of your oranges. Deseed your dried ancho chilies. I like to slice them in the middle and kind of fold it inside out. Remember to remove the stems. Remember to look like a bit of an idiot in front of the camera. Throw your ancho chilies in there. Your one whole chipotle plus juice. Four cloves garlic. Two cups of chicken broth. Your orange juice. Your cumin, your coriander, one tablespoon cayenne powder, two tablespoons oregano, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon cinnamon, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon honey. Hopefully you saw my warning earlier, but ultimately don't use a food processor for this. This is when I realized I had made a huge mistake. Clean up your mess and transfer it to another container and pull out your immersion blender. It does a much better job. Look at those bubbles. That's the stuff. You should be getting it to this consistency. Pretty much everything blended up. Roughly slice your remaining orange. It does not have to be perfect. 
roughly chop your remaining onion. Whilst we're doing this, now would be a good time to preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we have all our ingredients prepped to go into the braise, we're gonna lay down a foundation of orange as well as onions. Lay your lamb on top of the bed of oranges and onions. Chuck in three bay leaves. Place your remaining oranges and onions on top of the lamb. Also add in the leftovers of the oranges we had juiced. Admire the beauty of this all. Pour over the braising liquid that you blended earlier. This bad boy is now ready to go into the oven. My lamb shoulder is about 1.7 kilograms. I cooked this one for four hours, but in general, you'd be looking for three to four hours on average. Now we're gonna get everything prepped for the quick pickled red onion. Nearing the finish line, let's chop up an onion. Put your onion into a heat proof jar. Now time to make the pickling liquid. In a pot, we're going to put a half cup of water, quarter cup white vinegar, quarter cup apple cider vinegar, one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, a couple tablespoons of honey. I'm using the hot honey again. Give the pickling mixture a stir, bring it over to the stove and bring it up to the boil. Dramatically slide in your jar of onions, thinking you're really fancy and then now realizing it looks kind of silly. From the stove, bring the pickling mixture over while still very hot and pour it over your onions. Leave it to sit for at least 30 minutes. Four hours later, bring out your lamb shoulder. I would suggest using oven mitts and not just the sleeves of your jumper. This is what we're looking for. You may think it looks dry, but just wait. What we're gonna do is tear away some meat just to show how tender it is. At this stage though, you want to keep it as intact as possible. Make a stupid face. The reason we want to keep it intact is we'd like to remove the meat so we could shred it up whilst avoiding pulling out the oranges. Shred your meat. Look at how tender this is. Definitely moist. Keep shredding away, shred, shred, shred. Try to pick out all the oranges and take the marinade and pour it over the shredded up lamb. I like to chuck the lamb with the marinade on top back in the oven with no heat, but just using the residual heat to kind of slowly char up the top and I guess reduce it down further. Say hello to Mr. Winston. And this is what you should be looking for. You know, some charry dark bits at the top, but you know, still very tender. Caramelization just helps add, you know, a bit of depth of flavor. With your shredded meat, place it on a tortilla. Today I'm using corn tortillas. Place your pickled red onion. Add some goat's cheese. Some coriander. Yeah. 
Look at this thing. As I said, you know, it's a real rich and complex flavor. It's really hard to describe, but I think the pickled onions, you know, help kind of mellow things out, but you still get that robust flavor in the back of your mouth. Goat's cheese adds a nice kind of creaminess to it. Awkwardly show your taco, add a bit of lime, and munch this thing down. This thing's tasty, and listen, like I mentioned at the beginning, there's a lot of ingredients, but really you're just cutting up some vegetables, chucking it into a blender, and then letting the oven do the work. It's also fairly bulletproof, really. With all that marinade and all the fat from the lamb, you know, it's pretty hard to overcook it. This has been Cooking with Kenzo. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.